Robert F. Kennedy Jr., kind enough to join us this day after the big debate. Um, it's always good to have you, Robert. I just wonder, uh, you're a pretty smooth debater in your own right. Uh, were you painting for Donald Trump? A lot of his biggest supporters say uh, that he just didn't bring his A game to the debate last night. Carl Rove saying that the debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump was a train wreck for him. Do you agree with that? Uh, you know, I, I thought, or I just watched the pre previous segment that you did with Doris Kearns, who I've known for you know, at least 40 years, and her husband, Dick uh, Goodwin, who's sure. a very, very close friend since I was a little boy. And I think uh, I, I haven't seen a better assessment or a more fairly delivered assessment than the one that she gave. I think that uh, uh, Vice President Harris clearly won the debate in terms of her delivery, her polish, uh, her organization and, and her preparation. I think on substance, uh, President Trump wins in terms of his his governance. Um, and but he didn't tell that story. In, in fact, the first question was an extraordinary lost opportunity because this, this is a question, and I think Doris pointed out that she never answered, which is, are Americans better four years later? And there's really no argument for saying that they are by all the indicia by which you measure social deterioration. We, we have doubled the inflation rate. The housing rates have doubled in the last four years. There's 15, more, 15 million more people, in, Americans living in poverty. We have these enormous suicide rates, enormous um, uh, 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 overdose rates, and we're in two wars, and all of these things can be attributed to the poor leadership from the Biden-Harris team, and that's the argument that he should have been making, but and, but he got distracted, yeah. and uh, I think it's unfortunate because he, you know, I think he really had an airtight tight argument for his presidency, but he was not able to make that case to the American public. He says, and he's commented a couple of times today, that he, he won the debate and all the polls show that he won the debate. I haven't seen a single one to show that. What did you think of that reaction? Well, I have seen those polls. You know, they're not, uh, they're, they're polls that uh, you see on, uh, you know, on the, on the internet. And, um, and a lot of them probably have, uh, have uh, uh, statistical problems with them. Right. But I, I would suspect that the polling over the next week is going to show, you know, probably a slight drop in his support, particularly among independents, as people migrate, you know, because I think uh, it was the first introduction that Harris had to the American people. She's been very skillfully kind of hidden, and she has not done an interview, and this was really an ideal forum for her because there are these 90-second sound bites. And you don't really go into the next level. And uh, I think that that she's very vulnerable in a in a like a long form interview that she do on a podcast or on a program like this. I think this is the ideal forum for her to display, you know, her kind of skills. And I think she did that very well. And I think President Trump did not tell his story, which is a, a very, very good story about his presidency. And I, I think that he didn't convey that as well as he could. But just to be clear, then, Robert, you are not changing your mind uh, or fearing that you hooked up with the wrong horse here, that you're still supporting him to take the win. No, no on, the, on the issues that I consider important, I mean, look, I, what, what, you know, I was listening to the substance, and on the substance, President Trump wins. On, on the war, you know, uh, Vice President Harris bragged about the endorsements by John Bolton and by, um, by Dick Cheney and, you know, 225 neocons. Who have, come out, who have come out to support uh, Vice President Harris this week. These are the people that gave us the Iraq war. These are the people who have given us the endless forever wars. These are the people who gave us the Patriot Act, the surveillance state, the, the censorship state. And they're not changing their affiliation to the Democratic Party because they've changed their beliefs and their values. They're changing it because the Democratic Party has dramatically changed. It's become the party of war. The party that I grew up with, the party of Robert Kennedy and John Kennedy, is gone. That was the party of peace. It was the party of civil rights, constitutional rights, free speech, and abhorrence of censorship. It was the party that of the, of the working class, of cops and firefighters, of labor unions. Yeah. And the Democratic Party today is the opposite. It's the party of war. It's the party of the wealthy. You know, 70 percent of the wealth now is controlled by the Democrats, 30 percent of the Republicans. So you've had this inversion. And it is the party of censorship. It's the so party those, of surveillance. Those forces right? remain very, very for you, cut. Robert, right? Those, those, regardless of the debate performance, those forces remain. The reason why I want to get back to the debate, if you don't mind, Robert, is that uh, 
uh, we're used to lots of presidential debates, uh, not, not all the time. Richard Nixon, after his experience with your uncle, didn't debate in 1968 or in 1972. But when your uncle was debating Richard Nixon, I believe there were four debates that year, three debates, uh, you know, the last go round, three debates before that go round. This might be a one and done uh, deal. What do you think of that? I, well, I've heard two things from the from the Trump people today, and I think that they're, uh, you know, at this point that they uh, they want a, a second chance at a debate, uh, and that President Trump is confident that he'll do uh, that he'll do very well the next time around. Uh, but I don't know whether the Harris campaign will agree to that. Uh, they uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. And as you know, Neil. This is the craziest election in history. It's the craziest election that you've ever seen and I've ever seen. It's topsy-turvy. It go, you know, you look back at just a month ago when you know, President, the day, in the days after the shooting at Butler, President Trump was invincible. And then President Biden pulled ahead. President Biden drops out. President Harris pulls ahead. You have the convention. She doesn't get the bump. President Biden pulled it over the last week. Uh, President Trump has pulled ahead again. So this all happened in this very, very accordion time frame. We have 52 days left in this election, and I would not be a person to make predictions about what's going to happen next. No, I hear you on that. If you heard and read the script, you'd think it was something out of Hollywood. It's real. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., yeah. great seeing you again. Thank you. Yeah, you too, Neil.